How? Welcome everybody, welcome to the official recovery. I forgot we should be plugged then. The, <laughs> the official recovery channel. Uh, that's a good start, yeah. Um, so I'd like to introduce you to my mate Matt. I'm just going to give you Matthew, Matt. Call me what you want. <laughs> Big cool. old words. Yeah, like this, <laughs> yeah, so this is Matthew. I first come across Matt, it's quite a new relationship. I come across Matthew. I was in a treatment centre um, through my addiction, took me to there. Um, and I met Matthew on on a uh, on a platform for recovery, um, so that that was the initial contact. I met him not long after. I come into support at house and I'll speak about my story. I come into support at house and Matthew met me when I arrived, brought me to me location, and made me feel really welcome. In the first couple of days, I really I don't I wouldn't say this lightly. I don't know what I would have done. I really Aww. didn't want to be here. I wanted to run. Um, he didn't like alleviate all the stress, yeah. but you certainly went above and beyond. And then first, the first 24, 48 hours, you made a big difference. It was in this exact room, actually. It, 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 but someone did. I didn't do that especially for you. I just did that because someone did that for me. Yeah. It was. Uh, this might sound horrible, but it wasn't anything personal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I was just because like, my recovery needed it, not yours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, carry on. <laughs> yeah, so so that's it. So that's the introduction of Matt. So, and I've since got to know you a little bit. Um, we have very similarities. Uh, we both like we both do extra stuff for our recovery that includes uh, certain aspects of it. And I'm not going to go into uh, me personally. I don't mind what you do. I'm not going to use a lot of recovery language. So I'm talking about recovery in general. It's a very broad scope. So I'm not okay. going to use substance recovery language. Right. But you're fine to do that yourself. Just I don't want to limit my audience with reco- with substance recovery. Sure. Um, yeah. So uh, with that, I'd like you to um, take the camera and just uh, introduce. T- so for pe- obviously people who know you know your story. Uh, for, for more for the person who's come across you for the first time who wouldn't know you, can you just sum yourself up who you are and what you're about. So yeah, yeah, I'm Matthew, I'm an addict, I'm, I'm an addict in recovery. Um, yeah, I've been trying to get some sort of, rep, uh, some resemblance of recovery for, a, well, I went to my first meeting at 27. So from 27 to late 30s, I was in and out, in and out of recovery. I, could, I just couldn't get it. I was having sort of some periods of sobriety, clean time, um, but they were getting shorter and shorter. I, got, I had like one year when I was 27, and that's it really. But uh, I've been in recovery, my sprite dates uh, 2016, December 12th, 2016. So I've been, I've been, I'm in my sixth year, so five years and four. I'm not saying that to boast, but I've had decades of in and out, in and out to get. To where I am now and I think that's I've been talking about this morning that's been my journey my journey's been that I was introduced to recovery but couldn't get it for decades and decades until you know I could admit and accept that I was an addict um, but I didn't really know what one was you know I could say I was one but I didn't really know the nuts and bolts I didn't realize how powerless I was I didn't realize how my life is unmanageable with or without drugs you know drugs drinking drugs for me was the solution to my problems and when they stopped working i just didn't know how to cope with life and i just thought i just had to put these this stuff down and my life would get better but actually it got worse you know because it at least with drugs or alcohol you've got periods of time where you're numb you know, it does what it says on the tin. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful. I was talking about it this morning. I was so grateful about knowing what I suffer from now. You know, I'm awake to it. I was never awake to it in the past. Even when I was going to meetings or going to get getting help with recovery, I was never really... I knew something was going badly wrong with my life. But I didn't think it was, I didn't know what it was, so I just kind of, but now I do, I'm so grateful. And you know, like what we, we had a little chat before we turned the camera on sort of thing. But that thing about all the stuff that I was, had guilt, shame and remorse about, you know, stuff that I'd done in the past, stuff I'd done to other people, people had done to me. I, I wanted to 
sweep that underneath the carpet. I didn't want to talk about it at all. But now, you know, it's my biggest asset. You know, all the you know all the stuff that I wanted to take to the grave, I've actually unpacked them in a sort of safe way with another person that's in recovery. And it's set me free now. You know, I can I can hear someone when they share about their story and I can identify with stuff that I would never have held my hand up to and to share back with someone to make sure you know make them know that they're not alone anymore that was the biggest thing when uh when I went to my first recovery meeting I remember a guy coming up to me and put his hand out and going you need never be alone again and I believed him right then I knew I'd found the tribe you know I knew I'd found a group of people that not only thought and felt but did the same things, suffered from the same guilt, shame, and remorse, but have got a solution. But not only that, they've got a solution, they're living the solution out there. And it was just really attractive. You know, I was sold there and then. I knew the solution. But what I failed to grasp on was I couldn't apply that solution in my life at that time. It took me over a decade to fully concede to my innermost self that I was an addict or, you know, an alcoholic, whatever. Um, Because I could admit and accept. You know, I was in my 20s before I even got into recovery. I was sitting on tables. This is how arrogant I was. And I still can be. I was sitting on top of tables in pubs telling all my mates, that's it, I'm done for, for good. And I meant it. And I've got a problem. I'm an alcoholic. Or I'm, an, I'm an addict. Yeah. I could admit that was no problem. You know, shit was going south. Pardon my, my French. But it was going bad. My life was going bad. I knew something was wrong. But I didn't know how deep this root of addiction went. You know, I just thought, I just need to stop whatever I'm using... Stop wherever I'm using and my life would my life would get better. Yeah. And my experience is it gets really painful without a program. Whatever your program is, and, and I kind of got to know what my program is now. Still now, with five years in, if I'm not doing a daily program, if I'm not surrendering, fully conceding every kind of every day, yeah. then I will drift off from this incrementally, not straight away. Just yeah, can I just come in? No, yeah. I could listen to you all day, Matthew. I've listened to you in depth, but um, for the sake of so the substance recovery, I've got a huge identification. I'm a substance abuser, misuser, whatever you like yeah. to call it. Um, so I identify with what you're saying. What I want to do, I want to spin it a bit more now. So it's a good introduction to yourself. Uh, I think that was a, a really good general. Generalisation of you about getting two tears. I want to get into the nitty gritty a bit now, sure. so I'm going to ask you some questions. Uh-oh. If you're uncomfortable with any questions, just say so and we'll move on. Yeah. I'm going to start with one, a famous one. Do you believe in God? Wow, that's a massive question, isn't it? I think when my first reaction when I hear that is, first and foremost, I've got to remember to stop playing God, I think. That's the first and foremost, like... I've always had a spirituality and when I took drugs for the first time, it was, an, it was a spiritual experience. And all through my childhood, I was always searching for something. You know, I was always searching for something and I found it in substances. But the only problem with that is it was synthetic. It wasn't um, real. The experience wasn't real. It was uh, a synthetic God, if you like. But once I put all that down and got into this program and and I follow like a spiritual principle program, I get all of that from there. And I've been on a journey for the last five, six years about, you know, that relation, what relationship have I got with this higher power? Because at the end of the day, for me, I couldn't stop using for my kids. I couldn't stop using for my mum, my dad, doctors, girlfriends. You know, I have the only thing that's given me that power that I was powerless over 
is a spirituality. So I do believe in a higher power. And I think it's vital without that element of in my recovery, yeah. then my recovery, there isn't a recovery. I start running on self-will. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna lead a bit now because I can I I understand what you're saying. I fully identify with what you're saying and I agree with what you're saying. But it's kind of a bit element. It's a bit a bit recovery substance recovery focused. So right. I just want to broaden it out now. So I just want to relax the atmosphere a little bit and then get into the crux. Do you believe? I know you're identified as an addict, alcoholic. Do you believe you were born? Or it was something that, what's your stance on that? Was you born an addict or did it progress in later life? life? Um, I don't know, it's all right. I don't really get into that debate so much, but I, what I realise now, and it's just for me, is I realise that, you know, I was, I was born, brought, brought up, and I've got uh, three brothers and one sister, and they was all brought up in the same house and none of them were addicts or alcoholics. My dad probably spilt more drink down his front than I've ever drank in my life. He's not an alcoholic. Um, but, and, and, and the sort of childhood trauma or stuff that I've grown, areas that I've grown up with, I don't believe makes me an addict. But it, it it has an effect on me. It has like it makes me more um, a lot more thirstier. You know, it makes me more hungry to change my perception of what's going on. Definitely. But I think the biggest thing is, it, I'm kind of out the debate sort of society around what makes me. I need to find out. You know, what is the exact nature of it, rather than how I've got it. I believe I was born with it. Okay, you look. You're asking for an opinion. My opinion is that I was born with it. I had the ism when I was a kid because as a kid I felt apart from and I would fix on something to ease that disturbance. Even as a kid, yeah. I used to go around on my bike jumping stuff. I was a thrill seeker. But that was to cope with the, the, you know, the emotions that I was feeling as a kid. Yeah. Now, even though I don't, I've not picked up a drink or drug for five bit years. I will still, if I have any pain in my life, I'll still revert to trying to fix on something, whether that's food, relationships, um, shopping, anything. So it's like I had it when I was young. Whether I was born with it, I don't know. Yeah. All I know is I've. I'm definitely yeah. Well, again, <laughs> it's a, it can be either way. You know, what I mean, we are to not question off and ask. So, what I'd like to do now, I want to get across to the viewers, is give us a little description of early the early life of Matthew as a young boy. Uh, yeah, like I said before, it's it's quite cliche, but it's true with me. I always felt apart from. I didn't feel like I fitted in with anyone. I was a very nervous kid. Um. I always thought that one day someone will say something to me that, or I'll be discovered or, you know, someone will turn around and say, actually, you're not from this family. You're from some other, another family over there. And they, ah, oh, right, that's why I feel like, but it was just my perception of it that was wrong. Um, but I had a great childhood. I was out most of the time. My parents were foster carers. So there were loads of kids in and out of the house. You know, um, but like when I took my first drink as a kid, the first substance, then all of that nervousness went away. Or I felt part of, a part of something at last. Yeah. So that's what I chased, really. But yeah, my child was, was, was okay, but the ism was there as a kid. Yeah, I definitely like that, yeah. Um, so again... So we've got a little introduction into your early childhood. So what, what was your first experience with a substance, a substance, substances? When did you like I said, it was my, my dad used to take me to the pub um, as an early, uh, very early, and I remember pestering him for a drink because I, I I saw what a substance could do for the first time for someone when I went to the pub. So my dad would sit at one end of the bar, and this other guy would sit at the other end, quiet. Not you could hear a pin drop. I'd get my crisps and my Coca Cola go and sit next to the Space Invaders, have a couple of games there. So I would watch my dad and this other guy have a drink, then start talking to each other. They'd have another drink, 
and then they'd sort of squeeze a little bit closer to each other. Mm. They'd have another drink, the jukebox would go on and, and they'd be laughing and joking. Yeah. So as a little kid, I'm watching this game, but there's something in this liquid that turns boring old men into life and souls of party. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. they would give me money and, you know, wouldn't really care about me. So not, you know, like, hey. Get on with what so I about. knew there was something in this sub, in this liquid. So I was like, I'm really interested in this. So I remember just sort of like bugging him. And I think he was either drunk enough or just had enough of me. And he, and he, I remember having an half a bit of shandy. Uh, uh, yeah, half a bit of shandy. And I remember looking at it. I didn't like the look of it. Didn't like the taste. But what, like 10 minutes after I drank it, the effect just lit me up. You know, I, I, I felt at one with the world. You know, I didn't feel nervous. I felt this is how I am meant to feel like everything matched up in my in my body in yeah. my in my the external the stuff that i was projecting externally matched up with my internal reality you know everything aligned i know i'm taking talking a bit dramatic but it was and i chased that chased that all my life that sense of ease and comfort that exhale moment yeah. i chased it yeah I, I identify again. Um, so here's a question for you. So Matthew, the man who sits next to me here today, and where we are, if you could give one message to the 10-year-old Matthew from now, what would that be? I'd probably smack him. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably say, stop being so fucking annoying. Uh, no, um, I don't know really. I don't know if I'd say anything because... You know, I don't know if I'd want to spoil the journey, if that makes sense. Yeah. Do you know what? I do regret certain things, where certain decisions that I made, not normally, most of the time, in under a substance. But I don't regret, you know, like I used to, like I said before, feel guilt, shame and remorse. And I do, that I own it today, but... I'm really grateful for all that trauma in a way. Like I've, 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 I'm at peace with it now. Do you know what I mean? So I wouldn't want to preload ten-year-old me. Maybe, maybe I would. You know, maybe I would. Yeah, I do hear. Like, it's very. I, I do hear what you say, and it gives you your identity. That I'm more yeah. thinking like if you could give. So you've got to give a message to the ten-year-old you in order to fulfil yeah. his life. What would yeah. that one statement be? Just say no to drugs. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Where the wisdom it's, it's to a hard to one, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. For instance, I'll give you an example. Yeah, yeah, what would you for say? For me, so I, what I'd say to the ten-year-old me, and this is just thinking, I've not pre-planned this. It would be something like, um, "Don't stress too much." It's, you don't need to get so I'll try and like get myself on my own head so it'll be kinda of like don't stress too much about the little stuff. Do you know what? The ten year old me would not have listened to me. <laughs> yeah, but he I would not that. have listened uh, you know, I, I barely listen to anyone these days, so I'm definitely not gonna Yeah. I, I I'd be too busy jumping fucking curbs on my bike at ten year old. <laughs> yeah, I, mean? yeah, I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't even be phased with me visiting my 10 year old self do you know what I mean <laughs> you know I'd be yeah. like oh like this is you know I'd be yeah I was annoyed more annoying can, if you can imagine <laughs> I was more of an annoying twerp at t- <laughs> exactly at a 10 year old than I am now yeah. you know so yeah go on I do it yeah I do it yeah, I do understand um so I want to talk about now, um, we're kind of doing sweet, we're jumping, it's not going as smoothly as I planned. It's <laughs> off, uh, Sorry about that. It's off, no, it's off the cuff, it's me, this is me. Um, so I want to talk, I've got certain areas I don't want to come in, but I'll come in with this one because it's a big one for me, this fear. Do you want to do a little introduction of what fear means to you or do you want to talk about your biggest fear today? Yeah, I had a load of it today. load of fear. And think the thing that I found out about fear is that I would say a good 99.9% of the time, most of it, excuse me, most of it does not even come true. It's normally a load of rubbish that my head's told me that's going to happen that never happens. It's the head trying to, you know, um, 
have me off. Um, the, other, the other thing about for me about fear, I think there's like two types of fear. There's like rational fear. Like, so for instance, if, uh, you know, for like a tiger, if you imagine a tiger just walked into this room now, we'd have a really good human response to it. Like we would both shit ourselves yeah. and run off. Yeah? yeah, yeah. And we need that as a survival technique. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas the, a lot of the, the, a lot of the fear that I encounter is self fulfilled. You know, it's the fear that I pour on something that doesn't even need it. So the fear that I, I, I suffer from a lot of the time is like, I will sit here and be fearful that there might be a tiger coming into the room. What happens, the tiger hasn't come into the room yet, but I'm like, there might be a tiger today. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's going to be, do you know what I mean? I identify a lot, because what I get, I have a rational fear where I think, I can, I'll just give you an example. I've said something to someone, mm. which will make me feel, make me feel fearful, and then it'll lay it on top. I think they'll tell that person, who will yeah. tell that person who will do that? And this this one little irrational fear then builds into this big world of absolute, and it's never it's never come true yet. It's so. mad. It's that it's. We, we, I always pour on stuff that doesn't need need it on. The other the other the other thing I, I I'm trying to switch this fear around, and I've been trying to use it recently about, you know, fear is such a good motivator. You know, if I didn't have fear, if I didn't have, like. I, I used to act, so I still do a bit of acting now, right? It's really important that I go on stage with a certain level of anxiety, certain level of nervousness. So I'm alert more, you know, I can think of my lines, I remember my lines more. And um, normally if I'm in fear, right, it's a really good indicator that something's going on that I'm not looking at. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So normally, like for today, I was going to a meeting this morning, I had a lot of fear. And I realised what the fear was about. And once I dealt with that fear, I was all right. There was still a bit of nervousness in me, and but it wasn't at a level where it was debilitating, you know? Yeah. And I think that's where the fear sort of crosses over a line, doesn't it? You know, if I'm fearful of even coming out of the house to get help, then that's when it's, it's a problem. But I see it as a positive now, you know, it's a good motivator. Yeah. Same with depression, same with... Uh, any sort of extreme it's a good if i'm sat in that there's a good good um there's a good uh good chance that there's some some area of my life normally in my recovery life that i'm not looking at yeah I, I identify that because i used to play football as a younger child i was gonna be a footballer and then at the big games didn't always happen at the nervous energy before I mean, made before, you play better yeah. but then it could go that too far when it got too nervous too excessive I'd go missing yeah so it's a fine line bit of nervous energy a bit of apprehension bit of tension bit of anything is, is okay and it's too it's a bit of fear can actually do can actually drive a man to great things it's all it's all new territory as well because back in the day when I had that fear a drink or a drug just got rid of it and I, and I become confident again, you know, and because I grew up in my teenage years, that's when you really meant to learn about, you know, overcoming fears or learn about relationships. And because I was using drinking drugs to, as a solution, I didn't know how to deal with fear because I, I dealt with it this way before. Yeah, yeah. So now it's all like new territory and... Like I've dealt with fear in the past, but I'm not practiced at it. You know, yeah. it just come back. I, I, I identify a fear. I work on it, and it generally it doesn't go away. Especially, I'll come on to my next question. I, I've got. I'm recovering from grief. My dad right. died in 1989. Yeah, yeah. I see it common. In my, the way I see it, you're either alive, or you have to experience grief, or you you either pass yeah. away, or you experience grief. Yeah. So my recovery from grief is still ongoing 20, 20 odd years later. So, um, but it, it fluctuates. It's not, it's not always been a constant. When it first come on me, it was horrendous. And then, um, but I forgot my question. I've been rabbit on that much. But so it's like how to deal with, how you deal with grief. Yeah. Have you had grief? Yeah, so, so my grief, so have you experienced grief in your life? If you did, how did you process it and things? I've not, but I've got an experience like last year, my dad um, had cancer and uh, they sat me down and spoke to me about it. And um, 
my initial reaction was, right, my dad's going to die. How am I going? Because I don't, still don't have contact with a couple of my brothers. It's still a bit frosty and we haven't spoke for a while. So my, my brain immediately went to what's going to happen with me at the funeral, <laughs> yeah. which is great. Absolutely bonkers thinking, not thinking about, you know, my initial, my first thought wasn't about my mum, my dad. So, oh, what am I going to do? You know, it's, it, it, it's selfish and self-seeking till, till the end. But the pro, sorry to get over, I know you're trying to keep away from the program. It's your, it's but your, 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 I, yeah, I, 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 I can't, I I can't help di dive into it. Yeah. But what I'm saying the, the, about the grief and the fear and it all sort of mingles in with the program that I'm on, it's taught me, like hearing that, hearing that thing about my dad uh, having cancer, that would have been a perfect excuse for me to go on a bender. Yeah. You can't tell me what to do, my dad's dying, right? Yeah. But now it's completely switched my thinking around and I've gone from being selfish to unselfish. So my, my second, my, my irrational first thought went, my, my program kicked in and then I was like, right, how can I serve my mum and my dad? How can I be of service to them through this, put me out of the way, yeah. how can I be service to my mum and dad? So I made sure that when I went round there, it wasn't about me, like, oh, look at me, I've done this this week. You know, I'm asking them, how are you doing? And, you know, when my mum mum goes out the room, my dad sits there and he talks to me about his fears and his emotions about what he's going through with his cancer. And that's never happened between us before. Yeah. It's always me talking to him, manipulating him about money or me talking to him about... Um, uh, I, I'm scared, I'm fearful, my life's shit. So my life has turned round enough because of people that I meet in recovery and recovery process that I can sit there and shut up and listen to his fears and, and apply my programme into the responses. That So he, he gets some comfort out of that. So it's gone from, it's gone from me being selfish and self-seeking to how can I make this this situation better for you lot yeah you, you've you've ignited a couple of questions there so um cancer's becoming more and more i'll use this one first cancer's becoming more and more common mm. now it's a i've not experienced a touch touch wood and um, there's no direct immediate there will be cancer in the family my granddad had cancer didn't kill him old age killed him but um it's getting more and more common it's horrendous and recovery from cancer <laughs> Um, it's a big, hopefully a big issue for this channel. You know what I mean? That's kind. Of, that's the only reason I would be when I, when, I know you. I want this to be your interview. I want to be your identity, your instigator. So, and you are very much so. Let me recovery. Let me ask you a question though. Yeah. So your your dad passed away, and obviously from where your dad passed away and to up recent, you've been in in addiction, right? Yeah. Yeah. But now you're in, in recovery. How's your perception of? Um, that situation or, or the dynamics between you, your mum and your dad that's passed? Yeah. Has it changed since you've been in recovery? Yeah, it's again, because um, I've tried to get recovery for years. I know for, I know for a fact that I've lost my dad. Horrendous. The fact me, I'm still recovering from this grief decades mm. on. Um, so I know that me, like kind of like in the normal things that my mum will pass at some point. I know this, but our relationship is very, we love and care for each other, mm. but it's very fractured, it's very, mm. so like we often, I ring it every day and that, and it often ends up in arguments, we end up not coming to blows, but it's, like, mm. it ends up steaming out, even though I know all this evidence, I know life's finite, um, I still, the relationship between me and my mum, partly due to my addiction, partly from my point of view to her behaviour, um, but what I have noticed in recovery, me coming into recovery, I've got better at a rate of, now this is my opinion, but my mum's kind of like left. So I've left that void of being at home, mm. um, causing her all this pain, to just being gone like a vacuum. And she only gets little snippets off my friend, off my friend, off my family, and bitch she gets off me, and it's not always pleasant off me. Mm. So it's um, the rate of recovery. Um, even though I know all this evidence about life and, uh, and my parents, I love my mum dearly, it's still very fractious our relationship. Mm. Over, obviously, over I'm 43, 
over a long period. This is when I when I was in when I was in and out of the recovery, like from say twenty seven to late thirties. I remember I used to go visit my mum, and it, it was always very chaotic, and you know it would always be about me and. I think these days I don't really I don't really talk a lot to my parents about recovery in that respect. I kind of that the, the they will always ask every so often. My mum will say, "Are you still going to your meetings?" And I'll say, "Yeah," which you know that's our kind of way of saying, "Yeah, I'm still in recovery and still doing what I'm doing." Yeah. So I can't remember the point I was making. Yeah, but... I don't. I've just done that. So I. I, I... Because what it is with me, my my mum, my and my mum's relationship, from from my opinion, mm. is the most healthiest it's been. Yeah. Since I've entered addiction, I entered addiction at in my perception yeah. at sixteen. It's, she's wrong me today, telling me how proud she is. Now yeah. I've had pe- I've had longer periods of clean time, and the relationship's been worse than ever. Yeah. And now that's that's due to my reaction yeah. to her behaviour. It's due to my expectations, my judgments, I have got a part to play, but what, what I dislike sometimes in this recovery world, the, I'm always the perpetrator, she's never, she's not guilty of nothing, it's always me. Now I understand I've got to look at mine, but when I'm getting hurt, especially on certain vulnerable areas, um, it comes to this, this feudal place, uh, we end up at feudal, um, but for me, um, Parents, I'm a parent now as well, so I've got both sides. I've got, I've, I've got a living parent, and I'm a parent myself. So, and a lot of the stuff that I'm here for from my mum towards me, which I can only, I can only presume causes my animosity towards my mum. Mm. I've done to my children, mm. so it's um, it's part yeah. of the kettle, you know what I mean? It's um, so I can't, I don't, I'd, I'd like to think I don't judge you, but it's, it can get very quickly. Very toxic, very quickly. Now my part in that is my behaviour over the many a year. And it frustrated me at many times. I've been on the phone to various people complaining and, mm. and I get different different bits of advice. There's no clear cut, but definitely what I would say, if you went to recovery, I'll say this, I'll speak to camera. If you're coming into recovery, just have a bit of patience with your ears and dearest. We really hurt them. And it, um, Cause we're doing, working a program kind of like get a bit more relief a bit quicker than our girls around us yes it's, ter- it's a terrible deal isn't it for for loved ones because you know we we wreck we you know we we're like like some of the literally we, we're like a hurricane we rip through the lives of you know our, our dear, nearest and dearest and then we put everything down we become clean and then we expect um everyone else to forgive us, to treat us the way we want them to treat us, you know, and it, and we, we've got all this um, support and um, therapy and all these meetings that we go to, but, you know, I mean, there are fellowships out there for the people um, that have addicts in their life, but most, you know, a lot of the people in my family don't have the luxury of that and they're left with all the scars and yeah like I agree with you it's uh it takes time you know that for that trust to come back yeah you know um because for years and years I've been saying yeah th- this is it now I- I've d- I'm done for good I'm never gonna yeah. I'm never gonna drink again and you know I- I- and I meant it I meant it but I've let mm-hmm. down time and time and time again even now I think um you know, uh, from certain members of my family, there's still that dis- distrust and stuff like that. But, you know, that's okay. I've got to accept the best way for me to be understood is for, for me to understand them. I've got to get rid of me and see it from their point of view. And then yeah. I loved what you said, though, just a minute ago. And it's made me think, you know, like you've had longer periods of sobriety, clean time in in the past, but your relationship is... Is, is the best it's ever been now. Yeah. And, and that's interesting. Yeah. You know, that's it, interesting. Yeah, it's weird, because um, what I'll come on to now is, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to specifically say this now. What's your favourite? We have slogans and what we do. What's your favourite slogan and why? I love them all, by the way. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a few. 
There's just a few that I don't like. I can oh, probably right, tell us where you come from. Spin up, what, 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 which, what's I mean, your worst? Do you know, do you, do, you, yeah. do you know what? I go, go through phases with certain things, and certain slogans mean different things to me over time. But the one that's getting my go, and it's, this is all my own shit, and I need to look at it, but I hate when people, easy does it. Just oh, ease, okay. slow, you take your time. <laughs> and like my experience is, no, you, you, you're going to die. <laughs> and, you know, and like I heard a great one the other day. It goes, right, you, and I say it to some of my sponsees when, when, when my ego is kicking in. I say, right, when was the last time you um, was clean? And how long was it from when you, um, you, you relapsed and that time now? Some people will say a couple of weeks, some people will say a couple of days, and I'm like, right, you have got a couple of days to get this program, otherwise you're going to relapse. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. I do believe that. I do believe once you've cut on the back of a relapse, once you, that first day one, day two, there's a window of opportunity out of a I'm room. a massive thing of that. And, and it's not, it's not a de definitive time, it's individual to the person. You have a certain period of time with that desperation, you've got support. Get a grip. Yeah. yeah, my sponsor always used to say, "Look, we have got a win. We've got two weeks to do this in because, and it's my experience that I do. I'll, I'll get clean. I relapse. I feel absolute guilt, shame, and remorse the next day. I will go to any lengths the next day yeah. after a relapse. You tell me to do anything, and I'll do it. Two yeah. weeks later, because the illness for me centers in my mind, it will start telling me." it weren't that bad. Do you know what? It wasn't really, it wasn't all your fault. It, she had a bit to play in it as well, don't you think? And because my health, um, my body repairs itself pretty quickly, and because I can't rely on my thinking, it starts to tell me it weren't that bad. Yeah. You know, you've had, you've had a week without any steps in your life or without any program in your life. You know, you don't, you know, easy does it. <laughs> so I, try, I, 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 I know what they mean. Easy, it's like don't overload yourself. Don't go to like ninety meetings in one day. But so I, I like, I like the idea of easy does it, and it's all about balance. And 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 meeting, meeting makers don't make it. But easy does it. But do it. Make sure you do it. But easy, easy does it when you do it. That's the one that I want to rewrite. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sat here sniggering because you've actually pulled me that off of it and me moving in. I've said it to, to someone who just recently come in. Oh, easy does it. Yeah. No, I didn't say it in them words, but I said it in. I said to him like, get settled, take your time. You come in right after me. I said, yeah. So yeah, that is well, point. I don't know what's good for anyone else, but I know what for me. Yeah. And this is the thing. It takes me half an hour to relapse. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. We're all individuals. If there was a, we could, if we could write yeah. the book, yeah, and pass the book and say follow that, and you'll be, and you'll live a happy life. We'd all be doing it, wouldn't we? But there is books out there that does do that. Uh, but the one side fits all. No, no, no. You're right. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and that's the beauty for me at the minute. It's finding out. It's my identity. Find out who I am and what works for me. I it's think it. that's why these these. I, I I love a podcast. I love YouTube stuff. So I think that's I love the way the cross pollination of YouTube. I mean, it's not not what got me clean and sober, but it's added a hell of a lot, and it's shown me different sides to things and different fellowships, and introduced me to all all sorts of stuff. So I think that's why I said yes when you asked me to do this because I think it's a great platform. You know, we can share. I get stuff out of YouTube stuff that I don't get, say, at other meetings, yeah. and vice versa. I can't get yeah. from a screen that I can get a live meeting. You know, yeah. face to face meeting. Yeah. But I think a good mixture of everything is, is yeah. important. Yeah, getting that balance, isn't it? I know. Yeah. yeah that yeah. swear word. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's what I want to say. What? So in recovery, and I'm talking about the broader terms of mine now. Do you see what? blows my mind the potential of youtube internet social media when that time yeah. when you're lonely you're isolated that for connection for interest for forever it just blows my mind well the zoom revolution from covid and uh, the lockdown it's just i know some people didn't get along with it but 
Mate, I, I absolutely love. That's where I met you. Yeah, That's where I met yeah, you. Yeah, it is, yeah. And um, maybe we wouldn't have met otherwise. And I'm grateful for. I'm you know what? I'm grateful for the lockdown. I had a really nice lockdown. I know it sounds horrible, but and I got plugged in. I knew that I had because all the meetings closed. I knew I had to change. I had to change the way I perceived my recovery. There's yeah. certain basics that I kept to. Um, you know, the sort of connection with a few people. But I had to get out of my comfort zone. I didn't like the whole yeah. sitting in front of a camera. I thought it lost something. But I embraced it. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't have met the people that you was in uh, recovery houses. Yeah, yeah, Are you allowed to say certain? The actual it's your short interview. Right. I'm anyway, going to keep my anonymity. It doesn't. So it doesn't. It doesn't matter anyway. But yeah. you know, the, the 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 place that you was in, I wouldn't have found out about the place. I wouldn't have met. And there's like three, three or four people that have come out of that same place that I'm still in contact with now. Yeah. I wouldn't have got to, the, the fact that you had, we had like two to three uh, recovery um, second stage rehabs coming and join us in that Zoom meeting it was just amazing, absolutely. And just going on that journey with you guys was. And what I will Never say, I'm going to spin the meeting a little bit now. I was coming back to you. You wouldn't have met me. You wouldn't have met these people you, if you hadn't have followed the program of service. Mm. So I want to state that. Now, this is what I want to do. Now, I've look, the interview's not gone as a plan, but it's really good. I like it. And what I want to do now, I want to come away from <laughs> the world of substance recovery. I want to get into Matthew and get into... So a big thing for me when I come into recovery was like, and it's still a problem with me, this was in life, nothing to do with that prediction, mm. is it me free time, like me, me, me chill out time, what, yeah. so I know, so I know personally, but tell the people, for people who don't know you, what does Matthew do to chill out, and, and how's his chill out in recovery, how's it evolved, and things like that? So, yeah, I got into art, when I was in the psychiatric ward, they asked me to, I said like, I'll do, uh, anyway, i Fully conceived. I, mean, I can't help talk about recovery. You can do it. It's your interview. You so can do what you want. in this psychiatric ward, um, I'd hit my rock bottom, fully conceded. I'd go to any lengths. Had a meeting with the doctors. They said there's a, a art in recovery group down the down the corridor. So I just went to it for that hour and a half. I was just doing art. Never, I'm creative, but I've never picked up a pen or a paintbrush or anything like that. So I just thought I'd try it, and I got a bit of relief from it. I had my washing machine, machine brain went. Anyway, I got into art, and uh, absolutely loved love art, love communi communicating through art. Started painting, started getting involved with the community, um, getting involved in uh, exhibitions. You know, doing uh, murals on walls, and you know. Uh, just doing lots of like solo exhibitions and group exhibitions. And it's just weird roads that you go down in recovery where you think, uh, you know, I start getting into sailing. I went on a big sailing adventure in my first year of recovery, met this mad French guy um, that was taking a boat from uh, Scotland down to France. And I said, I've never, never stepped foot on a boat before. I just went along on this mad cruise and I fell in love with, sailing and i've managed been blessed enough to i own my own yacht now <laughs> yacht. in re in recovery <laughs> goes on I, I hobnob <laughs> with all the uh, yacht boys at the, at the sailing club in uh, lancaster and i'm sitting you know i'll be sitting in the bar and like my boat's parked up over there and i'm sitting with these old salty sea dogs that have got more money than sense and and i just think how oh, the you know what have I got here? You know, like how, and I, and, I, and I love it, and I love it. And I never thought I'd go down this road, but I find myself here and I just love it. I'm looking to move on to a narrow boat soon, hopefully, if we can get the right boat for the right money and all this kind So life's insane, absolutely crazy sometimes, like, but none of that would have happened. But yeah, I love art. That, is that answer? Yeah, sure. That's, I know you like art as examples of your art. Uh, as well. I'm looking at one now, you know what I mean? I've seen your art. It's fantastic. It's amazing. Not my cup of tea, I've got to admit. And that's what I mean. I got into dancing. I mean, you've seen me videos. I, I might even post a video yeah. on here if you're lucky. Um, that was a new thing. That's what I like now, exploring my identity. Yeah. And, and my spare time is like going out there, trying new things. 
And, it really and that's what you've, de- yeah, because I remember you you, um, you did some of the drama and recovery yeah, sessions yeah, as well. And then, yeah. that's what it's, that's what, that's the freedom, isn't it? That's the freedom we've got now. We can find out who we really are. And explore, yeah, like you said, explore those parts of your personality. Yeah. Even the thing, even the explore the sides that we didn't even know we had, you know. Yeah. And it's, I, that's what I love about you is that you will try stuff and go and do it. Yeah. You know, you're not locked in. You're not locked in anywhere. Yeah, I've had to, I've had to learn that. But uh, yeah, it's nice. Right, we've got about fifteen minutes left, so I just want to come to now. And, and this is a question, all these questions I'm asking you are questions that I would like, I've not pre-planned my answers, but kind of questions that I'd like to ponder. But I've got one, and I'll tell you what mine, I'll answer my one just to give you an example so we don't end up stuck. Okay. If I could change one thing about my past, so it's so I'm, I'm living my life, going through from what I know in hindsight, if I could change one thing that would spasm my life off on a tangent, what would that be? Now, mine would be for me dad not to die at, at 21. Mm-hmm. So I'd, if I could change what I'd... So it's not so much a regret, it's something I could change. I want to change one aspect of my life that I've lived so far. It'd be when I was 21, mm-hmm. my dad not dying. That's easy. That's an easy one for me. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of things that uh, if I went through them again, I probably wouldn't have done. Um, but ultimately, like I said before, I know it sounds cheesy, it's, it's probably, but I, I, it's actually true for me. I don't really regret anything now. I feel, I feel there's a value. I feel like there's a value in you as well with the, tr- you know, like your dad passing I, away. I think I, you, I, you've got, you have you'll meet someone if you haven't done already right and they'll be early in recovery and they would have lost their dad yeah and you will be able to affect them more than i can affect them yeah you'll be able to speak to them more than i can speak to them and i know that what you're talking about i get because that's what i mean although so it's not a regret me dad dying at 21 yeah, yeah. it's just something that i could change because i do I can't, yeah no you I can't get in this game in life in general you can't regret that, but if you got, if you I think it's regrets. more. I think it's more important to see the gifts, and I, it's going to sound yeah. a bit weird, but the gifts that that's given you. Yeah. Even though your dad's passed, passed. Yeah. But well, that one, gift. One you gift. Know, is, I know it sounds a bit yeah, weird. No, it, but one gift. I was talking about it this week to my brother and sister, is that the, the spasm of that, the addiction side of things. Although it didn't get it straight away, but hopefully my children will experience me for a longer time. No, there's one. That's I'm the, sure there's more. The trickle down, as I don't mean to take offence, but the trickle down effect of you losing your father is changed your relationship with your kids. Yeah. My relationship, like the fact that I've been out of my son's life for five years, it's changed my relationship with him yeah. to such a beautiful point that when I spend, don't spend a lot of time with him. But the time I spend with him, I have to be in the moment. You know, I have to be locked in, but f- free at the same time with them. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't have, like, before then, I was an addict, but before then, like, taking them back home or my head was always in the pub or, it like, oh, I know I'm going to get a drink or I'm going to use after I dropped him off. Yeah. Or something like that. I was never really in the moment with him. I loved him. We had a relationship, but I'm a much better, for that five years that I've been away from him, I'm a much better father now. Yeah. Not blowing my own trumpet, but yeah. I'm not, You I'm can look much... yourself in the mirror, I can do it, I can look myself in the mirror. Yeah. And, and hand on heart, without saying to anyone else, mm. that I'm a better, how can I speak for myself, that I, at this moment in time, given the amount of time I've got, given the circumstances I'm in, I'm the best version of... I'm, it's the, in the healthiest place it's been. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? Don't, yeah, I don't yeah. want to say too much because I don't and want to And there's, 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 there's a lot... And then there's... I'm not saying there's so much more. Yeah. I've not even started. I've yeah, not even I need to learn. Yeah. I need, there's, there's so much more that I need to do. So, I mean, you know, there's a lot more relationships yeah. I need to mend and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, right, we've got... I'm conscious we've got 10 minutes still thereabouts. Now... I'm quick. So... 
it's been a lot of recovery language, recovery based, which is great. Mm. Because this initially, when I first started this channel, it was for that. It was only once I thought about it that it spasmed a bit. Mm. So I had a fully, I've, I've loved the interview. I fully understand. I just want to take it a bit now, more for the common man. So I want to talk football. Mm. <laughs> Do you want to tell us who your team is? Well, it's obviously Tottenham, isn't it? <laughs> probably best team. <laughs> best team not to win anything that there's ever been. <laughs> so, um, so, so what, what's your best memory of Tottenham over the years? Well, I used to go as a kid. I used to go to Junior Spurs when I was younger. And uh, I used to go when, you know, um, in the North End where we used to stand. You know, I remember going to Junior Spurs and it being like a fiver or something, a ticket yeah. back then. And loving it. Um, didn't go to a lot of the games when I was older because a lot of my money went on other things. But I love, you know, it's you're never going to get rid of your... Uh... Now, my son, he's born up, up here and he's talking lots of different madness about following Bolton and all this craziness. But uh, and he plays a lot too much rugby for my liking. I need to sort of beat that out of him and make sure he starts playing football a bit more. But... And, um, but yeah, football. Football, okay. So, where, what, uh, who's your favourite Tottenham player? I think I've got an inkling this might be. Wow. Well, at the moment. I, I, well, come on, we'll have, we'll have in history and a presence, we'll have two off you. Yeah. Ozzy Ardelis yeah. was like, he was a legend, wasn't he? He was the, he was, he, he just lit the whole premiership. Up when he when he come along, Gaza was Gaza was unbelievable. Free kick against Arsenal. Yeah. Anyway, um, <coughs> yeah, I suppose Harry Kane. Yeah, uh, he's, he's, uh, I like Son as well. The devils are part of the ship for devastating. Yeah, the guys he's coming up soon, haven't we? Yeah, might, might be so friendly. That be, might be interesting. Yeah, so that's what I'd like when to say. We, when are we playing? It's a couple of weeks. I, 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 I don't want to say the cliche. Every game's a cup final. It's coming up in a, in a week. Or are you still on for the trip, uh, the quadruple? We certainly are, but I won't count wow. the chickens. Um, so I love your manager. Klopp is. Yeah, yeah, I would love to, him to come to Tottenham. <laughs> not a chance. Not a chance. Are you on drugs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've not relapsed. Um, so, um, so that's that so if you could give a message to you so i don't know if you're so this is not going to be made for kids this so just i don't know what the situation is but if you could give a message now you've been after from we, we've had the period which i've had the same as well i can mm. feel i can talk about it if you could from this moment forth to from where you're at with your child if you could give him one message now if he was to watch this video what would you uh, what i'm would just you really really looking forward to making memories with him and make and, and being more in his life gradually i'm i'm looking forward to you know going on holiday with him you know in the future yeah i'm just uh, no expectations but i'm i'm just really excited yeah. like really excited the when key, I way, time. key way i heard that was gradually i'm on the same page and yeah. i look forward to holiday gradually because when I get, I have a problem with more. So when I get a little mm. bit, I think of the next move and the next move. And I, yeah. I just want more, but it's gradual. I'm, I, I'm just really grateful for the time I've got with him at the moment. You know, anything else is a bonus. But at the moment, I'm more than grateful, more than happy. I'm really concentrating now on my relationship with his mum. Yeah, And I think that has come on leaps and bounds since we've since I've started seeing my son and she's been dropping us off, him off and we've been interacting and I've been applying my program with with my ex and because it, it, ultimately I don't want her to be go nervous I don't want her to be scared or anything like that which through the consequences of my use in my past that's what's that's what's happened yeah. turned that yeah I'm on the same page. I don't want I don't want to do that anymore yeah Okay, I'm just conscious of time. I'm dying for the third, but we're going to keep rolling. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so again, now, so how can I word this? So basically, so we're on this platform. We're doing it. We're doing what we're doing. We're both we're both here, willing to do it. Um, so just think of of the common man. It could be a common person. Could be any age. Is struggling with substances. 
And then you get this message, there's a channel out there, so it's the first time, doesn't know nothing, mm. never been to a meeting, been, but if you could give one message at this point, if this is the first thing, they've gone on to see these one, mm. episode one, or if you could give a message to the person who's just starting or embarking yeah. on recovery. Yeah, I'd, I'd just say to them, like, have you had enough? Are you, are you ready? And I'd say to them as well, you know, you're not alone. You know, I felt really, I felt I was unique in the fact that I was the only one on this planet going through what I was going through. And that only I have done the things that I have done. And I found out there's hundreds of thousands, millions of people out there that can offer help to you, that's got a solution if you want it. And I just followed, I picked someone, I wanted what they got. And I went up to them and asked them how they did it. They told me how they did it. I followed that and I got what they've got. And it's as simple as that. The, there was a few penny drop moments that I had to undertake, which was that I can't do this on my own. I thought I could, but I can't. Yeah. And just finding people like yourself, find, meeting people, getting to know people, you know, I can't do it on my own, but I can with you, with other people in recovery. Yeah. People that have gone before me will show me the way. And, you know, and, 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 it, and people have said to me, you know, give it a year of your life, right? If your life hasn't improved in a year, six months to a year, you can have the misery and the pain back from, you can go back, the dealers are still going to be there, the pubs are still going to be there. You can go back to that if you want, it's not a problem, but... I gave it, I gave it all of, you know, I was all in and my life got better. Yeah. That's my story. And it's not exclusive. It's inclusive. Anyone can get this. Anyone. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Matthew. Um, one last final trick question. Is there anything today you are in denial of? Oh, Jesus. Where do you start? <laughs> yeah, I think my ego gets me into trouble. I think, um, my ego got me into trouble this morning when I went to do a share. It, you know, I forgot where I'd come from. So sometimes I'm in denial of that. Sometimes I'll push my head higher above my station a bit and, and think that I'm all right. So sometimes I'm in denial of thinking I'm actually further on than I am. Yeah, I hear you. So, bastard! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, so we're gonna wrap it up there. Been there going a while. So this is a long video. This is a long. What's the word? Vlog podcast. Um, yeah. So uh, I would imagine it's gonna be the end. So I can't really give a message, but hopefully you got through to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed it. That was a bit recovery focused, substance recovery focused. Um, but again, that's kind of a matter close to my heart, a matter I portray. So I really identify with you. I wanted to be your interview. I wanted to show your identity. And I do feel we got there with that. So I want to thank you for that. Thanks for thank asking you. me. Thank you for keeping me one hour more clean. <laughs> <I appreciate laughs> it. So with that, I'll finish. How? <laughs>